Today we're going to be making some art with the August Scroller Box. But first we're going to need to find out what's inside. We have a Mars Lumograph 4H pencil, a pilot drawing pen, it looks like it might be a 0.5, a candy, looks like a lemon frutella, and... Ooh, what are these? I've heard of chameleon like markers. This says it's a chameleon pen. I'm, I'm curious. Fine liners that come with instructions. My favorite. So many ways to use. Well, it looks like there are three ways to use them. If there's a way to do this wrong, I'm sure I'll figure that one out. So they are color changing fine liners. So this one looks like it's the color Cool Gray 8, YL2, BG3, BV4, PK5, and RD3. We have a menu listing all the supplies in the August scroller box, as well as a prompt word, which is rainbow renaissance. Basically, we're gonna draw something and hopefully this prompt word will inspire us. I don't know, let's go. This month's scroller box sticker is this fun scribbly rainbow. It needs more pink. <laughs> That's everything in the tissue paper. There's also a little sketchbook, the croak book. Got a cool raised embellishment of pretty thick paper. Only one way to find out. Sounds good. 24 sheets of 160 gram blank paper. And whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thank goodness there's a leaf there. This is actually really kind of cool. Not even looking at the bird. David, look at the bird. No. Look at the bird. No. Look at him. No. I really like how the hue just shifts, but it seems natural. This illustration is by the artist Jonathan Knight, and you can find his social media right there. Now this illustration actually kind of makes me realize what I think this prompt word was trying to say, which is rainbow renaissance. Kind of like a recreation of an old art museum quality piece, but obviously Jonathan made it and brought some like new life to it in a way. Definitely inspires me and that in hand with the prompt word makes a lot more sense to me about maybe where we can take that prompt word. Look at the bird. No. What I definitely want to do first, I'm going to go to the back of the book and I'm just going to swatch out the art supplies and kind of play around with this color changing fine liner. Whoa, okay, that cap is massive. <laughs> the cap's almost the same size as the marker. So like if we do that and then I don't know, mix it with a color. So like if you take the cap, am I doing this right? Do you have to like shake it? I don't understand. Clearly. It says after one second there should be a change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh wait, that's not gonna do me any good. So I'm gonna take this blue pen, stick it in this pink cap. Do we hold it like this? Okay, we'll see. Come on, come on. Oh! Hey, it worked this time. Oh, maybe I overdid it. It's still pink. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. I mean, that wasn't even close to 30 seconds. Eh, it's still pink. So it looks like the key is to hold it up right like this. I'm still not seeing that, like, gradient. So let's do it for, what, one second? One. Hey, there we go. <laughs> That's really pretty. I'm trying to figure out the practicality of these. They definitely hold on to color a lot longer than this little diagram suggests. It's a little trial and error. One, two, three. So it starts pink and it slowly becomes a gray and now it's green. Hey, I did it. These are kind of fun. I'm a little uh, overwhelmed by how I'm going to use them in like creating an art piece though. Good old pencil. This just needs to be disrupted, it's too. Interesting. <laughs> now what if we use pencil to like add a little shading around it? Cute. I think that's all the art supplies they included. So we have a fine liner, a pencil, and then these like magic color changing fine liners. So I guess we could try and like make something in like this sort of style. The question is, does this erase well enough to be able to use like the fine liners on top of it? So if we like, if I take my kneaded eraser and erase this, does it interfere with the way the fine liners work? Yeah, you can kind of see the pencil underneath of it still. Let's mix that with a little blue. 
One and two and three. Don't want to go overboard again. Now it says you can leave the caps off for two days, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and uncap all of them. Decapitate them. You keep the caps maybe over here. Bodies over here. And then I can just mix them as I need and I don't have to worry about putting the caps on the wrong one because I'm not gonna put caps on any of them. I'm trying to figure out how I wanna use these colors. Like uh, Jonathan's, they just kind of like switch hues willy nilly. I don't know if there's like a rhyme or a reason to it. Definitely there's some colors layered for the darker shadows, but like the color choices don't seem to be that purposeful. I mean, maybe they are and I'm just not getting it. <laughs> a little grumpy girl here. The yellow is nice and bright, so you can't really see the strokes as well. So it works nice for like filling in areas. You could almost do the sketching in the yellow and then layer the other pens on top. And then darken up the colors as we go. I'm gonna try and imitate this drawing. See if I can figure out what I like about it. It looks like it's purple up at the top, so that means we need to mix pink with the blue. Well, that's kind of interesting. It's more blue up at the top as the color was running out. So if I want to go back up at the top, I should add a little bit more blue. I'm trying to decide what the benefit is mixing directly with the caps versus mixing just directly on the paper. And it seems more familiar to me. Oh, well, it does. It definitely helps if you want to get one color for a longer amount of time. Because you can't mix the colors to directly get that purple color. Good luck getting that purple color by mixing them directly on there, you know? Then you gotta be careful when it starts turning into blue. I don't quite have the grasp of tones quite like this illustration, but getting closer, maybe? I feel like I wanna draw a little bit bigger than the limitations of this sketchbook. I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper so that maybe I can take advantage of like the shapes of the actual pen. I'm gonna try and be very, very light with this pencil. I don't think I'll try and copy any specific old Renaissance artwork, but I'm just gonna try and capture like sort of the outfits and like the, I don't know, the style of them. So they had very realistic proportions. So maybe I should try to draw that way too. We'll see how this goes. So like, you know, an actual neck <laughs> instead of a finger for a neck like they usually draw. Much less stylized. I'll try to be too detailed at the beginning here. I'm going to definitely get bogged down. I'm okay with taking a few liberties. I'm gonna like kind of make a classic old portrait sort of look. They always had really long noses. I don't know if maybe, maybe an art historian could explain. Renaissance portraits don't cater to like the modern appeal of what's attractive. And I don't know if that's because they were kind of stylizing them in a way that they found attractive or if they were just trying to be as accurate to what they saw as they could. That'd be something I'd find interesting to know. Hey, hey. I <laughs> drew too small though. I have this huge piece of paper <laughs> and I ended up drawing in a size I could have fit on here. Well, well. <laughs> a nice puff sleeves. Center part there. Gorgeous. I think I'm stylizing the face too much still. Let's keep it nice and uncontoured. A little braid in the hair back there. Yeah, we got a pretty renaissance lady. I wonder if I should give her some kind of massive crown just to fill this space. Could give her one of those collars. Or we could just put a rainbow behind her. Maybe we'll see what I do with that when we get there. Kind of just want to try start using these pens by being a little dark with it. Maybe the eye line. Use that blue. And then have that transition into something maybe red. So that's purple. Just so it's lighter. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can probably color in the eyes with this too. Then I want something significantly lighter. Maybe yellow mixed with, I guess, pink ever so slightly. We can add in some of these lines. We don't want to be quite as harsh like wrinkles and such. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use yellow to uh, just shade some things that don't need to be too dark or I want to be a little bit more on the subtle side. My light source is up here, so. 
be a little darker to the right. And I can mix in a little red anytime I want it to get darker. I just like to give it a little tap. Makes me feel like I'm doing something. <laughs> now these paper, this paper does seem to bleed with these pens, but so did this sketchbook. Although maybe it wasn't quite as much. Maybe this paper wasn't the best idea. But I'm committed now. <laughs> I'm gonna grab that, uh, where is oh, this? The drawing pen. And darken up the eyes a little. I'm not sure what else I'll use this for if I don't start using it now. Probably mix this pink with blue to darken up the edge. Draw those completely flat eyebrows. I wonder if they like shaved them to look that way or if that's just how they grew back then. You know how when you get a bad photo, see the picture like on Facebook later on and you're like, ooh, that's what I look like? Like, ugh. Imagine you paid someone <laughs> for your portrait way back in the day and you finally get it back and you're like, ooh, is that really what I look like? <laughs> and like, you can't whip out your phone and take a flattering selfie to make yourself feel better. You're stuck with it. <laughs> Should I try to make this like really ornate or keep it simple? Good question. I found this reference with this really cool outfit that kind of reminds me of this drawing. So I'm trying to replicate it. At least I have been for this little bit. So I'm gonna add these. I call that a drawing. It's obviously a painting. <laughs> we have like a nice base. I'm gonna start adding in those pearls. Hey. I'm really glad I decided to do this. It's really adding a something something. I'm gonna mix this with some blue. Darken up a few sections and have it like slowly blend out. Perfect. So I mix this with green just to lighten it up a bit. That's the blue with the green. Hey, right, well that's one side done. <laughs> add these poofy sleeves in. Now I just wanna add these little like um, pearly things everywhere. So why not? yellow back. Oh, actually her hair's pink, isn't it? So we should probably use a little pink back here. Mix it with yellow maybe to lighten it up. Ooh, perfect orange. Ooh, that worked. Look at that gradient. Oh, yes. Oh, shoot, I left the cap on. Well, it was sideways. It's probably fine. I haven't been able to get colors to mix when they're sideways, so I'm not that concerned. I seem to have to hold them completely upright. A little more dimension. See, it's already fading. Gotta be careful. A little blush just for my own personal taste. <laughs> Maybe I'd be better off mixing pink with yellow instead of yellow with pink. That way it'll fade into a lighter color as the mix fades in. Maybe we gotta hold it a little longer. There we go. There's the orange I'm looking for. Making some difference. This is definitely out of my art style comfort zone. I'm still trying to get to grasp how long to hold a marker. Some of them seem to last. Like the pink cap, I don't know if it's a little dried out in there or something, but it takes longer to mix the color onto another, even though I'm using yellow, which I feel like should pick up other colors really, really easily. Just a thought. Yeah, I've said a bunch of random designs here. Wiggles. I have fine liners, so I might as well try and take advantage of the detailed aspect. I kind of want to mix this with a color so it's like hue shifting. Yes, pretty, pretty, pretty. Just add some more designs. Keep the sleeves a little more interesting. I mean, not that they don't have a lot going on already. <laughs> I wish there was like a colorless blender one so I could like have it fade into nothing. That would be really, really good. I'm gonna try and add some design and texture to the fabric. I don't have anything in mind. So I'm just being really subtle with it. Can you tell the pink pen is my favorite so far? <laughs> I still think it just needs something. So what I'm gonna do, is just gonna go a little extra and add some fun, crazy, I don't know, not so much a pattern, Kind of supposed to be part of the outfit, but I'm just going to show, take find a center point and draw straight lines coming off of it. And maybe it's part of the dress. I don't know how I would make it part of the dress. It would have to start curling down. 
It's kind of like a spider web. All right, I think my ability to improve upon this is reaching an end. I can try using some yellow just to add light shading, maybe variation. Other than that, I don't really know what else I could do to this, except start over again. You kind of just can sense when your journey with a piece of art is coming to an end. Simplest puzzle ever. Part of me wants to like cut this. Yeah, just picture it like this. <laughs> My personal art style, I like to like mix flat colors, so using only fine liners was definitely a challenge. That challenged me in a way that uh, flat colors definitely don't. <laughs> and then also the fact that they're just all rainbow colors was really, really interesting and outside of my comfort zone as well. Oh, and then on top of that, trying to draw in a bit of a more Renaissance art style, obviously. There's still influences of my own art style, but I tried. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you drew if you were drawing along. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to find out more information about Scrawlerbox, I will have a link in the description. I want to send a big thank you to Scrawlerbox for sending me this box to try out and to share with you guys. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye! Look at the bird! No.